so welcome back now we are going to start uh, the probability distribution prior we are discussing the issues which will make ourselves ready uh, to understand the concept of probability distribution probability distribution link closely with the concept of random variable probability distribution by itself is a function all random variable they have a certain pattern which can be defined by a function and that function which will define those patterns of random variable we call them probability distribution so simple probability distribution is a statistical function or you may represent those outcomes from the function in a table so sometimes you may find people define them as table a column with a random variable and a column with a probability. So that table describes all possible values and the likelihoods, the chance that the random variable can take within a given range. Or we can say it is an equation that links each outcome of a statistical experiment uh, with probability of occurrence. That's why I said you must have a column which represents a random variable and a column which represents a probability, a likelihood, a chance of such a random variable to occur. And uh, as long as you may include all possible chances, all outcomes, which means a sample space, it means for the columns of probabilities, if you add all of them together, you will end up having unit, as we said before, the axiom number two, probability cannot exceed one. So probability distribution can either be discrete or continuous. How? Depending on the nature of random variable. If the random variable is discrete, then the probability distribution is called a discrete probability distribution. If a random variable is continuous in nature, then its function will be called a continuous probability distribution. So it is simple like that. So the type of probability distribution depends on the type of random variable. So discrete distribution and the probability mass function is an equation that links each outcome of statistical experiment with its probability of occurrence what you need is to assign the value of that random variable and the weight for the value of the probability that's why we say it links the equation of a discrete random variable is referred as mass function that's why you say here and the mass function that equation generally is referred as a probability mass function shortly the famous call it pmf so the pmf which is the short form we may use from now on the pmf must have the following properties and if you look closely you may find that these properties are the one we are speaking about when we are talking about the axioms of probabilities as I said before, every probability must observe those axioms. So for discrete random variable x with the possible values x1 up to xn, the mass function must possess the following properties for it to be a mass function. You can have so many functions, but not each function is a mass function. It will be a mass function if and only if it will possess the following properties. First of all, the function of x, if you input the value x to such function, you must have a value which is greater or equal to zero. And you may find that this is the first axiom non-negativity. So if you may input a value to such kind of function, and that function end up having negative, then that is not a mass function. Again, if you sum up the probability of all the probability obtained from the inclusion of all possible random values, the answer must be one. And we mean remember that this is the second axiom of probability, which is say the sure event, the sum of a sample space is one. Another one is the probability of one event at a particular event because this uppercase represents a random variable while a lowercase represents a particular value of a random variable 
so you may obtain the specific probability value by input by putting the value to such kind of function and this value must possess the quality of the first two uh, properties which means the value must be greater or equal to zero but it must not exceed one if you get any value here out of that range that is not a probability a probability cannot exceed one and it cannot be below cannot be below zero and something else the cumulative function is obtained by summing up all the probability of event less or equals to x1 so the first three or the first four if you mark them clearly you may find that this will build up the concept of mass function if you find something else especially for one and two out of the range that is not a probability you may see here since the discrete is infinity then to sum all of them together you will use the sigma notation you may use sigma notation and it will satisfy for continuous the equation for continuous random variable is referred as density function for discrete is mass function so back there we had pmf now here we have a pdf probability density function so the pdf have the following properties you may find that they will be closely related with those we obtained from the discrete with some few uh, differences the first one the mass function as usual since it is a probability it must be a negative greater or equal to zero this is obvious again the sum of all probabilities must be equal to one from the least range to the highest range but here we are going to sum them by integration we are using we are going to use the integral sign why because of the infinity values something maybe we say from 1 up to 2 there are so many values from 1 up to 2 if you count all decimals so it is difficult to capture them by just summing up by using the sigma notation but the integral notation can take care of that one so the sum of probability is one so we find that the first two are typically the same as those obtained from discrete and they are inherited from the axioms number one and number two of probability distribution the third one the probability range from a up to b this one can supply the limits in our integral of density function for computing the probability between a and b so the probability of random variable a less or equals to x less or equals to b for any a and b this a and b will supply the limits value for our integral sign something which i must add here now it was not there when we had a discrete case here this less or equal sign for continuous the equal sign the probability of infinity value unfortunately i didn't put it here in my handouts but i can explain and you may understand if i say find the probability of f of x equals to a infinity number simply if you put it to the integral you need to supply the same limit a up to a and if you need to supply the same limits it means a up to a at the end of the day of computation of the integral uh, function it will give you zero that's why this inequality sign either be it inclusive or exclusive are treated the same here under continuous random variable this is a typical different when you have a discrete random variable but for continuous do not bother whether it is inclusive or exclusive the last one is the same as the last one from the discrete random variable which is the probability of less or equals to x you will integrate from x up to lower limit of the given distribution 
the last concept which I wanted to introduce is the distribution parameters, as we are going to find uh, from the part two and the part three sessions, each distribution must have the so-called uh, parameter of such a distribution. And what is that? Each distribution is a parameter that defines its overall appearance. They are very crucial because if you twist the parameter, you may twist the overall appearance of such a distribution. Most distribution have between one to three parameters. Most, I don't say all, most. Specifying this parameter establishes the shape of the distribution and the all of its property probabilities entirely. Because your parameter, as long as it may affect the overall appearance, it may also affect your probability as we are going to see from the later sessions. These pr parameters represent essential properties of distribution such as the central tendency and the variability. In any distribution, the parameter will perform among the following three functions. Location. It may be a location parameter, or it may be termed as a scale parameter, or it may be termed as a shape parameter. A distribution may have one, or some, or all. We are going to talk about uh, each parameter particular in a given distribution later on. When we start uh, going through one distribution after another, we are going to speak these parameters are available here. Are they location parameter? Are they scale? Are they shape parameter? But uh, here we are going to supply only the definitions for you to get a clear picture. The location parameter, as its name, it is location. If you change it, it will shift the location of the distribution. Assume other things remain unchanged. So each and everything, the shape, wherever, will remain the same. Only that the location will be shifted, either to the, to the right or to the left. Nothing more, nothing less. You will understand this concept clearly when you go when you, you are touching one distribution after another. Since in each distribution we are going to speak about a parameter, so or not. The scale parameter on the other hand will compress or stretch the entire distribution. The location will not be touched. Only that will either compress or stretch the entire distribution as we will see later on in each particular distribution. The shape parameter, neither change the location or stretch. So the shape parameter change the shape of the distribution in some other way. Now, a bit here people may confuse about the shape parameter and the scale parameter. The scale parameter will not alter in any way the shape. If the shape is bell-shaped, it will only stretch or shrink, but not change the shape from bell shape to something else. That's why it is called a scale parameter. But the shape parameter will change the overall appearance. It may not stretch up or shrink it down, but the shape, if it was bell shaped from the previously, now it may be something else. That is the meaning of a shape parameter. So the shape parameter does not change the location, or height of the graph, it just affects the overall shape or the overall appearance. It is not necessarily that all distribution will have shape parameter. Most of the time, most of the distribution do have the location and the scale parameter. Like in normal distribution, when you are speaking about parameter, in normal distribution it is mean and variance. Variance take care with the variability, so it is a scale parameter while mean take care with the central tendency, so it is location parameter. We will describe it more deeply when we reach to such a particular distribution. To this end now, I may say this is the end of our part one, uh, which we covered uh, the probability theory and the sum of the concepts, including 
the scales of measurement, which is very crucial. And uh, the later session, we are going to cover the discrete probability distribution. Thank you so much for your attention.